Today we are going to, I had a request of showing how can you control uh, lights in Unreal from Aximetry So that's what we're gonna experiment with now So let's just jump into uh, Unreal uh, And we're gonna make a new level We're gonna call it controlling lights Duh. For the sake of it and uh, say selected yes. Uh, and this is a blank, uh, blank uh, project. Let's add a plane for uh, visionary purposes. Uh, where did it go? And let's just make that bigger, bigger, and bigger. Perfect. And then we add the axiometry camera blueprint. And maybe add a um, point light. No, not the point light. What's the other one called? Just did it, but can't remember. Something like this. Uh, like, like that. And I also would like to have it, uh, you know, volumetric with, the, with, with, you know, the hazy smoke. And it's always something that uh, sometimes it's hard to remember how to do it, but. You add an exponential height fog and then you go and search for volumetric and just check that box and what we're gonna do after that we probably want to change the colors to black because I want a black scene and then you go to spotlight and drag that volumetric scattering intensity up way up so then you see the volumetric starts to come I like it hazy and uh, cozy. And what are we gonna do next? I think now we're ready to do some uh, level uh, blueprinting, I think. Yes. And we're gonna drag, just drag this window in. Perfect. And since we're gonna run everything uh, real time, we're gonna drag it from Eventic so it updates all the time. And first, we're gonna drag the spotlight into the level blueprint so we can reference it. And from that, we're going to uh, find the set intensity. Could that be correct? I think so. Yes. And then you just pull it to Eventic. And then what you want to do to be able to control it from Aximetry is just to get the Aximetry Scaler and then it will show up in Aximetry. Uh, just call it Intensity so we know what it is. And the other question I got was just about how to control the color. So we're going to do it the same way and we're going to set the light color and connect it to the rest of the lines or well, the rest of the blueprint. And again, you just drag out and get Aximetry color. And I name it in a genius way, uh, color. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and now it should be able to work, but we can't see anything because all the data from Aximetry is zero. So we probably have to add some intensity. Uh, didn't work. Maybe we need to add some color as well. Let's see if we can get working. And uh, now we just need to find it with the camera. Yeah, see something? Oh, there it is. Red and nice. That's cool. So you can play with intensity and you can also change the color and yeah, whatever. Well, whatever. As long as it's intensity and color right now, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the other question I got was, can I, uh, how can I use it with, uh, you know, uh, with with the sequencer in Aximetry? And we're gonna check that out right now. Uh, I haven't done it before. So first, we need to add uh, the main sequencer uh, that we're gonna drive everything from. And after that, we need to add a scalar on well, the color node. So let's add a sequencer color and connect it to tracks. 
and the other one to yeah the color node so let's jump into the sequencer uh, and this is uh, let's uh, start I never done this before so let's see how we do it I think uh, you need to add a keyframe uh, and by pressing I guess it's alt and left click let's see if it works alt no oh yeah alt left click and then you you have a key and where do we change the color oh here it is and then you just choose the color red that's cool that's heavy metal and add another keyframe so we can see if it changes and let's pick some other cool color yeah the blue color perfect and if we play it should change i guess yeah cool so now the sequencer is running the color 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 <laughs> Uh, let's make this a bit longer so we can see what we can do else with it and to uh, move in the timeline I push with the middle mouse button and drag it uh, we need to drag the second keyframe yeah we have to be on the key page and uh, this is just the transition between them so let's make it a hard cut maybe or yeah uh, now it should just cut to blue. Yeah, kind of. That's cool. Let's just make it evenly. So go to part and extend the timeline to four. And now that eases my mind. That's cool. So what can we do else with this? Uh, maybe we could uh, try and add an intensity uh, sequence node uh, or a scalar sequence node and see if we can do some something with the brightness and just like before with the color uh, and let's add some keyframes or yeah we need to be on the key page I think yes there you go and add one more keyframe see if it gets if it's working it should so let's let's play and it should fade up yeah sweetness I love when everything works so we have a fade and a color transition what what else do you need that's all you need in life <laughs> so let's make make this part a bit longer and see if we can yeah, just to add some stuff to it for the hell of it. Yeah, some more keyframes here. Yeah, need to be on the key page. And yeah, and just move it up. That's cool. And let's see how that looks. So it fades and it fades even more. If you, if you want to make a button that triggers from you know one one light setting to to another light setting uh, maybe we could try to do that instead uh, let's see if we can uh, disconnect this one and we could make maybe a switch color yeah and we pull that one in and then we make the first value red and the Second value, uh, blue. So now you have, you can trigger, trigger the colors, and for the sake of it, we could also make, you could, you could of course use DMX or something to to make this uh, better. Uh, let's see if we can switch. Let's bring in some scalar, scalar, could we do something with the scalar, copy scalar, scalar, let's, or maybe we could uh, do a switch integer that's 
the correct one, right? Could we do like that? Yes. So now maybe we have a value of 2. And we could have one of 10. So we could... Could trigger different lights. And we could also do... Let's go crazy with 100. So now you have different parameters. And you can also change the color. Like that. That's pretty much it. Uh, that's that's the beginning of how to use it. Uh, and uh, as with everything in Aximetry, you can do so much with it. Uh, and that's why I love Aximetry, because you pretty much build all the tools yourself uh, in the way that you need to use them. Uh, and uh, that's all. Keep uh, requesting tutorials. Uh, makes my life uh, a lot easier to help you. So, hope you learned something and uh, Take care.